Hey guys, Rochelle here with Amethyst Ascension. If you are new here, welcome. And if you are returning, thank you so much for joining me again. So today I am doing a hashtag. I have not done a hashtag in quite a while. So I've seen um, a few people do this and I really enjoyed it. And so I figured I'm just going to, whoops, sorry. I'm just going to dive right in also. And it is called Hearth and Home Decks. And this was started by uh, the beautiful Dawn Michelle over at Boho Tarot. So I love Dawn Michelle. I love her channel. I love everything. I watch both of her channels. So I figured, you know what? I'm just going to do this. She, she inspires me all the time. Um, so there's different categories um, for this particular uh, hashtag. And I'll be putting those categories down below in the description as well as a link to Dawn Michelle's original channel if you want to jump on this uh, hashtag also. Um, so the first category is called Hearth and Home, the deck that feels like coming home. And for me, that was the Everyday Witch. This was the first deck that I really connected with on a, it's like the deck even though I knew the meanings, it's like they really started to make sense. I started remembering them and retaining them better with this deck because it was easier for me to relate to the cards. So this feels like coming back home. Um, let me just show you a few cards. I'm sure you, you know this deck. But I just love this deck so much. I love to shuffle it. It's Llewellyn. It's a thin, bendy cardstock. But it just, when I watched it or looked at it and used it, it just started making way more sense to me. So it felt like it was tapping into, like, maybe memories, past lives. Who knows, but it, it feels like home. Felt like coming home. So that was the first one. The second category is gather together. Sorry, not sure what all that noise is out there. Um, and this deck is the deck that reminds you of family and friends. And I was trying to think of some of the decks that I have that are modern that are not already being taken up by other um, categories. And I thought about this one. This might hurt. This seems more um, modern day. Well, some of them do. More, uh, I don't know, just relatable as to like what's going on in the world right now. So this one seemed more like, uh, you know, friends and family to me. It packs a punch. It's beautiful. The artwork is definitely, mm, it's definitely more modern to me. I mean, <laughs> when I look at this, I think of the station wagon in um, Vacation, um, National Lampoon's Vacation. And I remember watching this with my family, you know, jeans and t-shirts and drinking like your coffee and celebrating, right? Just having a good time. Are my dogs, you know, fighting right now, solely in, you know, rough housing. So, yes. The This Might Hurt Tarot is the one that I thought of. Because a few other ones are also being taken up by. I didn't want to be boring and not have one for each one of the categories. So I chose that one. So the next category is Light Up Your Life. And this deck is the deck that lights your way in the dark. No pun intended. It's got to be the Lightseer's Tarot. This is another one that I swear I had missed out 
originally on the Kickstarter because I didn't even realize about it, you know. I didn't even, I think it was the first one that I had um, ever even seen after the fact about Kickstarter. Okay, sorry, I got interrupted. But it's the Light Seers. It is that deck that just, I mean... It's like I see the silver lining in, like, everything. It, like, shows me. Uh, this was in order because I was using it for something. I can't remember. I can't remember what it was that I used it for. But anyways, it's this deck. And I also have the indie version. But I got it after the Kickstarter when she opened it up. I believe the second time on her website and I think it went within a matter of you know like hours <laughs> I mean maybe one or two hours I don't know but I was so grateful so it could have definitely been in another category too but I had to put it in this category because it definitely has shown me the light in many different situations um, so yeah so the next category is rainy days the deck that you want to curl up with on a rainy day and for me when I think of rainy days I think of you know a nice coffee and just really really cuddling up in a blanket and just really wanting to spend some time in introspection and digging a little bit deeper and the tarot of the she and it also is like very romantic rainy days are very romantic for me so i look at the tarot of the she and although the artwork is not like super romantic it is so dreamy to me this whole world is so dreamy to me I almost put this as the first one of feeling like coming home because I feel like I've definitely had some sort of past life in the Fey realm or I currently have another one, another existence in the Fey realm. But this speaks to me on so many levels, deep levels of understanding, like those aha moments that you get. I get that with the Tarot of the She. Not to mention, oh my gosh, I mean, like, let me pick a card, all right? The Maker Prince. So if I find the Maker Prince in here, everything is, um, well, the, mi the Minor Arcana is all poems for the meanings. So, Maker Prince. The brother of all living things, he knows the web and where it sings. He has the patience of the roots and hears the wisdom of owl's hoots. And then it gives the little keywords. But I love the poems. That just feels so, mm, so rainy day to me. <laughs> so that was the one I chose for rainy days, was the Tarot of the She. All right. Now the next category was Harvest Nights. The deck that evokes harvest vibes or bonfire nights. And... That, to me, was the Druid Craft. It just feels like majorly autumn to me. This was one of the first ones that I did. I almost put it on, under home, homespun also, another category, because it was like one of the first ones that I ever also um, modified. And I was kind of afraid to, but I did it. I went for it. And it's not perfect, but I love it. But yes, this makes me feel like autumn with the colors, the muted colors, but all the greens still and the oranges and the yellows and the reds and just the the feel of it, you know, countryside and, and deep forest and chilly, like chilly autumn nights. It makes me feel like that. Like I can feel a breeze. It's weird. So it's this one that makes me feel like that. The Druid Craft. It's so beautiful. Alright. And the next category. Okay. Is the hand spun. Um, handmade with love. Is the category. 
It's the deck that feels like a homespun gift. And I actually had two, two decks for this. This one, which is the Cosmic Visions. This was one of the first ones that I ever backed on Kickstarter. And, I mean, the colors. But you can feel this artist. I mean, in each one of these depictions. It feels like it's, I mean, so much of it, it obviously it's hand-drawn. I, that's just, it's hard to put into words. I feel like the artist in this, in this deck so much. Like, the usage of colors and where she puts it and yeah, I mean, I'm just in love with this deck. Just love it so much. So that definitely is a homespun because of, it doesn't feel like, um, I mean, some art, don't get me wrong, is just so good that it doesn't feel like it could have come from a person. It feels like it's like machine made because it's so damn good. You guys know what I'm talking about. And it's not that this isn't, but it's so different that you can actually see the artist in it. It's not like perfect. It's character. It's beautiful in its imperfection. Let's put it that way. And there was another one that I wanted to put in that. And that is the um, Vitruvian version of the Spirit Keepers. I love this deck so much. It is so deep. So many levels that are put into this. And it is so, I feel like Ben Abelwen in this. All the work. Like I said, it's kind of like the same with the other one. All of her work you can see that this was hand drawn and then you know uh, she put her time and her love in this not that other people's don't too other people other artists don't as well but this is like not perfect you know it's it's just her and all the different levels of information and knowledge that she packs in these it's so intimidating but that's what I love. But I feel her in this deck. I feel Benabel and I feel her um, intellect in this deck and all the different levels of um, symbolism and different systems that all are rolled into one. So it just, yeah, it feels homespun to me. So now the next category was thankful, grateful, and blessed. This is the deck that helps you appreciate the good times. And I also had two of those. I have mm, the Bone Stone and Earth Flesh Tarot. <laughs> oh my gosh. This deck is so beautiful. It like the artwork is like, I mean, everything about it. There's nothing that I don't love about this deck other than the gilding. Because it wore off and I'm not a huge red person. But, or it is wearing off. But, eventually when it comes all the way off, I'll do something different with it. But until then, I ain't mad. But the artwork, <laughs> oh my gosh, I am so so incredibly grateful to have this gorgeous oh my gosh look at that strength look at that <laughs> i always think of uh neptune or poseidon and i'm sure that's who it's supposed to be this the book the artwork everything about this deck i'm just grateful to have it in my collection and I had found out about this much later than other people in the tarot community, but I had been just like dying to get my hands on this for like a couple of years, but I had, you know, before it came out and I watched her closely and followed her, um, her channel, of course. She's one of the first people I ever found on YouTube that I just absolutely love, but 
to have her and Anna Turian in this deck. And I'm just grateful. I was just grateful to get my hands on it and to be able to use it and soak in its magic because it is true friggin' magic. And the other deck that I am really, really grateful for and thankful for and that I had to also add in here is the Earthly Souls and Spirits Oracle. I mean, I know it's not tarot, but this is such a simple deck as far as like meanings you know it's got like three words for a card and you've also got like you know keywords on all of them but i seen this deck on brooks channel uh magical cat lady or i think that's what it was it's been so long since i've i've seen her I, i'm friends with her on facebook but on YouTube, it's been a while. And, you know, my memory is crappy. My short-term memory and my long-term memory is crappy. But I fell in love with this when I seen it on her channel. And then it was not available. And then I found out that there was a a, a version available on was making playing cards or... I can't remember. But I was able to get it. And it was a pricier deck, but oh my gosh... It's worth it. Look at this artwork. What is this? Is this Terry Foss? Yeah, Terry Foss and Sarah Robinson. Look at this artwork. I am grateful to have all this art. Clearly, there are other decks that fit into these categories, but these are the ones that I felt the most. And this feels so autumn-y to me as well. I mean, and witchy and... It just came in my life at the exact right time. And I'm grateful. I'm grateful even for the simplicity that it offers in its messages with the beautiful artwork. I'm just... It doesn't get much better than that. So, pure gratitude. Very thankful that I was able to snatch up the stack. Now... The next category and the last category is Comfy and Cozy, the deck that is always there for you. And this is also an Oracle deck. And Chris Ann from the same creator as the Lightseers. I just love this deck so much. I cannot even, mm -mm, I can't even tell you. Words just don't even express. This, when I really, really feel like I need an answer, but I don't, it's not just a simple cut and dry answer. I need guidance, just pure, plain and simple. No kind of questions asked. No, well, is it this? Is it this? Is it this? Maybe guessing that it could be this because with my mind, I always see so many different um, options. This deck puts it right into perspective simple no questions asked it just gets right to the point but then as if that wasn't enough oh my gosh and look at it's beautiful simple and beautiful right to the point gets you know it gives you that uh, beautiful guidance but on top of that the book and this is now available on you know I think through Hay House, mass produced, whereas um, this is the actual indie copy. But this book, sorry, you can hear the dog. <laughs> this book is so detailed and just speaks to me. There's, um, you know, like journal prompts, digging deeper, and with each card, there's so much that you can do with it, that it just really puts everything into perspective. I feel like if I really need an answer, really, and I know it's not tarot, it's Oracle, but guys, I love, and I know some people don't, but I love Oracle just as much as I love tarot. It's not one or the other for me, it's both for me. And for me to get a balanced reading, it's gotta be both for me. 
It just is. That's the way it is. At least right now. In, in my, you know, development right now, that's where I'm at. So I had to include some Oracle decks. So I hope you have enjoyed this. I will be putting all of the information down below as well as a link to Don Michelle's, um, the hashtag of this. <laughs> Sorry. I'm just not with it today. I'm like mumbling. I swear I'm here. <laughs> so anyways, I hope you have enjoyed this. I hope you also do this as well. And if so, if you have done it and I've not seen it, please leave me a comment down below and let me know that you did this also so that I can go and check it out on your channel. And if you are a newer channel and you know, people have not seen you that much or you're wondering what kind of content you can do, Hashtags are a beautiful way of doing that and you're sharing with us what makes you, you know, what makes all these decks special to you. So thank you for uh, joining me today and I am sending you love always. Thank you so much.